Welcome back to MVM. Today I am bringing you a sponsored preview. This one is for Dwarves Spring from Vesuvius Media. You might be familiar with them for the other games in the line, uh, Dwarves Fall and Dwarves Winter. Well now we're on to Spring, I assume eventually Summer. But each one of these games in this series uses these dwarves with different mechanics and different gameplay. In this game we're actually going to be playing a worker placement game played out on a hexagonal map where you're going to be gathering resources fighting monsters, and completing quests. Now, for those of you who are actually following the storyline of dwarves, you'll remember that the dwarves have dragons now. And although that these games are completely mechanically independent of each other, there is a storyline that kind of carries through. So you're gonna be able to raise and use your dragons during this game. Now, I have the board set up here in front of me for a three-player game. The first thing you're gonna notice is this is a prototype game. Um, I am using some deluxe components that they sent along with it, but the cards and the minis, nothing is final, but you will get a pretty good idea, uh, especially what the monsters are gonna look like here on camera. So every player is going to choose a color. They're going to get a player board and a deck of dwarves. These dwarves uh, in your deck are going to be used to both fight monsters and explore and gather resources. And we'll talk more about that when we get there, but you're gonna take everything in front of you, as well as getting one level one baby dragon and one fairy card. Fairy cards are kind of a, a take that mechanic during the game. You're gonna be able to gather these fairy cards and play them against other players. You'll notice if you look at the player board, you're gonna have spaces to put your dwarves across the top and you're gonna have tracks to put your buildings. Each one of these tracks is gonna to link to one of the three different resources. You have wood, food, and money. You're going to be covering these with your buildings and as you place them on the board, taking them off, uncovering new areas, and gaining more income during the game. You're also gonna have a few worker placement spots on the board. You'll have your blimps over here, which allow you to partake on quests, and then up here, which allow you to use your dragons. Uh, and again, these are actions you can take during the game as well as placing your dwarves out onto the main board here. You notice the board out here is made up of these hexagons and you're always gonna have one Wildlands hex in the center and you'll notice a few of these Wildlands hexes. Wildland hexes are where enemies can appear but they can also be used to gather resources. You're gonna place the rest of the tiles randomly around there and then you're gonna seed the quest uh, deck with six quests. Three of these are gonna be monsters and three of them are gonna be random and you're gonna be dealing these cards out in a row here. When you deal out a monster, you're gonna put the monster out on the board and its effect is going to take place. For example, the spider webs some resource spaces so that you can't use those resource spaces. After you've set up that deck, every player is gonna be able to put two of their cities out here on the board and you're gonna be able to place them on some resource spots to gain resources or to place them on grassland spots. In all future turns, whenever you build or place your dwarves, you have to come off of one of those structures. So you actually have to build out your workers in a chain from these. So you need to be smart when you place them during the start of the game. Once everyone is set up, you can actually start the game. Everyone's first turn, you're always going to start with income. You look at your player board and you see everything that you have unlocked so far and you gain all that in income. Since we've placed two, we should get two already at the start of the game and you're just gonna collect all these resources in front of you. You're gonna spend these resources to build structures. There's two different types of structures you can build, your main towns and then your stronghold. Your stronghold is very expensive. It costs seven of every resource, but it gives you some great combat abilities. When you build, you simply take one of your buildings and place it out adjacent to one of your other structures or dwarves. You can instead place your dwarves on the board as an action. Now when a dwarf goes into an area like this, nothing happens, you're just increasing your chain so that you could potentially in your next turn build a structure. But these are going to cost resources. And in order to gain resources, you're going to need to be gathering. I mentioned these wildlands areas where you can gather. When you move your chain of dwarfs into a wildland section, one of two things is going to happen. Either you're going to get into a combat with the monster that happens to be there, or you're gonna be able to gather the resources from that wild land. Either way, the gameplay is handled the same way. You're going to calculate your total strength, one for every dwarf in the wild land, one for every dwarf adjacent, and one for every city. For example, if I had a city here adjacent, I could get three strength here. And the way strength works is I'm gonna draw three cards from my deck. And when I'm fighting, I'm looking at the axe icon here in the top row, and I want to make sure that I've dealt enough damage to kill the monster. 
For example, this monster requires three axes. So in this instance, I might have failed. Nothing bad happens. I can simply come back again with another dwarf and I can try again. This time I'm drawing four cards. I could come back around with five cards. Eventually I could defeat the monster. When you do that, you return the monster to the supply. You remove the monster's card and you'll draw a new card to replace it. Now, if another monster comes out, you'll place that monster directly on the board, uh, but these quests can sit out here and be completed at any time. Cards that you used are going to be just discarded off to the side. Now, when you're exploring, it's done the same way. You're gonna calculate your total strength. You're gonna draw that many cards, but this time you're looking for backpacks. When you draw these backpacks, you're gonna collect that resource that many times. If I draw four backpacks here, I get four gold. If I was on a food section, I'd get four food. So that is the main way to get those resources. And then from there again, I can keep building out. Eventually I can build my fortress, which gives me even more power when it comes to those fights. Now the other thing you can do on your turn is complete a quest. And you're gonna see a variety of quests up here. These quests all require you to have something specific. For example, this quest wants you to have four wood and four food. If I have this, I can go to one of my quest completion spots on my board and I can take this character. So not only is this dwarf going into my deck to increase my strength, I'm also getting another dragon. You're going to take a level one dragon card and place it into your stable. Stable can hold five dragons and that card goes away. Now, you'll notice if you can see my player board here, a second area for the blimp that lets you actually call a card out of your deck when you do it. So not only are you completing a quest, getting a stronger dwarf, it gives you a chance to ship off one of your weaker dwarves at the same time. Now, these dragons can be used if you go to one of the two dragon areas on your board. You can actually gain whatever resource your dragon would get you. For example, this dragon gets me a gold. And at any time, I could choose to level up my dragons. This is a free action. You can pay the cost, you can return your dragon to the supply, and you can find the level two dragon that matches it and place that dragon in front of you. And now you're getting a better version of resources. Some of these dragons can even be leveled up to level three dragons over time. When you use a dragon, you're gonna place an exhaust token on them, and you're going to be done with that dragon for the turn. The last thing you're gonna be able to do is play a fairy card. And I talked about how these fairy cards have some take that aspects and they really do. They'll let you swap out your dwarves with other players' dwarves. They'll let you even swap out your structures with other players' structures. They can have some huge effects on the board itself. The way these work is you're going to be calculating the total fairy power you have. Everyone is going to start with one fairy power on their turn. You can gain a second if you've played in both dragon spots on your turn. Now, you're going to get to do the effect of the card a number of times equal to that power. So in this case, I would be able to do the effect of this card two times. The round is going to end when everyone has placed all their dwarves. When the last player has placed the last dwarf, you're going to go to the refresh phase. You're going to remove the exhaustion tokens from your dragons, and you're going to return all of your dwarves back to your player board. Now, your buildings out on the floor are going to stay there because you're going to be able to still build off those in future rounds. You're then going to collect your income again and you're going to restart. You're going to pass the first player marker and the next player is going to go. You're going to play through four of these rounds. At the end of the game, you're going to look for victory points that you've scored. You're going to have victory points on a lot of the cards you collect. The dragons give you victory points. Completing quests give you victory points. Uh, some of the monsters you can fight will give you victory points and things like that. You're also going to get victory points for collecting resources at the end of the game as well. So all these things are going to be added together to determine your total score, and you're going to have somebody who ends up being the winner. So that is Dwarves Spring. This game is on Kickstarter right now, so take a look at their Kickstarter page. I know you're going to want to see the final versions of all these components, especially the tiles and the minis and the cards and things like that. So go take a look at their page, come back here, feel free to ask any questions or leave any comments, and as always, thank you for liking, subscribing, and following us here at MBM, and we'll see you next time.